Hi everyone, it's Stacy. Thank you for coming on this yoga leap with me. Welcome back to anyone who's been practicing with me um, for any length of time. Welcome to anyone who might just be finding this video for the first time. Um, I, you can see I have my chair here in the background, so we are going to be practicing using the chair today. I do want us to encourage uh, I do want to encourage us to try and use the chair today. I'm going to try and use it in a little bit of a different way than we sort of typically do. Now it is optional and I will try and cue some uh, options if you're just practicing on your mat or if you don't want to get up out of the chair because sometimes we're just going to be using the chair for support. I'll try and um, offer some options for if you are staying seated in the chair. Um, I like to encourage us to try to use the chair, even if we typically don't, it helps us keep that beginner mindset and it's so important in everything we do, but especially in our yoga practice because, um, you know, part of yoga is constantly practicing and there's no sort of end point and, and you've mastered yoga, it's, it's ongoing. And so part of the way to do that is to keep that beginner mindset. So um, with that said, I don't use any other props really, maybe blocks or straps or bolsters. If you have them at home, feel free to grab them. And um, with that, I'll meet you seated in the chair for our warm up. Okay, as I said, I'm going to mostly be sitting and using the chair today. Um, if you are practicing on the mat, go ahead and find yourself in a comfortable seated position. And if you're in the chair, same thing. Find a comfortable seated position. If you have a back to your chair, go ahead and use the back to help relax. But we don't want to slump too much. We do want to keep a nice open tall spine to allow the breath to flow freely. We'll plant our feet on the floor, maybe lift and spread the toes a little bit, just so we can feel grounded and connected to our chair or our mat. Hands can be on our laps uh, in any position that's comfortable, and palms can be turned up or down. Turning the palms up will invite a bit of energy into your practice, and turning them down might help ground you. And I'm feeling a little bit out of breath for some reason. I guess walking back here took it out of me. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn my hands down towards my um, thighs to help myself, um, just to bring the energy down for myself and feel connected and grounded. If it's comfortable for you and it's in your practice, by all means, go ahead and close the eyes. If not, maybe just turning the gaze down towards the floor and finding something nice and stable to rest your gaze on. Let's just start by noticing, turning our attention to our breath, noticing all the different qualities of the breath. So how fast or slow are we breathing? How deep or shallow? Are we noticing any areas where maybe the breath's getting stuck on something and it's having a hard time sort of filling up the space? There's no right or wrong to begin with. We just want to notice. Maybe you can even notice any sounds the breath is making, the temperature of the breath as it flows in and out through our nose. Maybe starting to Deepen the breath. And so inhaling for a count of three or four or five, whatever feels best. And imagine filling up your whole core in all directions. So like a balloon, not just into the front side body. Fill up the back and feel the ribs expand as well. And then when you're ready to exhale, feel that balloon shrink back down, draw in towards the core center and find that seam three or four or five count out. So inhale to fill belly, ribs and chest. And exhale, chest, ribs and belly, everything draws in. So finding your perfect count, your perfect pace, inhale to fill belly, ribs and chest. And exhale, chest, ribs and belly. Continue with this nice equal ratio breath pattern, inhaling for three or four or five counts to fill belly, ribs and chest. And exhale, chest, ribs and belly. And once you feel you've got the rhythm down, 
See if you can turn your attention to your physical body. Notice your hands connected to your lap, to your thighs. Notice the sit bones connected to your mat or chair. Notice soles of feet connected to the floor. And then notice those areas of your body that aren't connected to something physical. So maybe back of head, maybe backs of arms, depending on the posture you're in. And then finally start to notice other sensations, sounds, tastes, smells, depending on where you are, some might be more heightened than others. And that's okay, just notice. We're really trying to draw attention to where we are right now, right here in this moment, and all of the sensations that accompany this moment. Take a few more breaths here, inhaling for three or four or five counts to fill belly, ribs, and chest. And exhaling, chest, ribs, and belly. If the eyes are closed, maybe just linking them open, reorienting your vision and sights to the room you're in or the space you're in. Maybe wiggling fingers and toes here a little bit, shifting in your chair on your sit bones. Start to bring a bit more movement to join the breath. Let's inhale, release the hands, sweep them up, inhale. And we'll exhale, bring them back down to our side. Inhale again, filling belly, ribs and chest. Reaching up, feeling a nice lengthening down the side body and exhale. And again. All right, let's inhale here, sweep the hands up. As we exhale, we're gonna twist. We're just gonna open the hands up about shoulder height as we twist. Often we bring the hands all the way down. Let's just stay nice and open here. See if we can't um, reach through the fingertips to find length and opening in the front side body. Still sitting equally on both sit bones. One more breath here. And then on the next inhale, we'll untwist, sweep the arms up, and we'll exhale. Let's find that twist on the other side. Again, we're not bringing the hands all the way down. Let's leave them about shoulder height. I'm just bashing into my wall here, reaching through fingertips to find an opening across the front side body. Maybe even feeling a bit of stretch in the shoulders, the front of shoulders. And on the next inhale, reach the hands up, and let's just flow with our breath a bit. So really rooting down through the sit bones so that you're twisting from the core here and the hips are staying stable. We're not lifting up out of the hips. Stay rooted down. Inhaling to sweep up and breathe in. Exhale. So twisting through belly, ribs and core. Arms reaching through fingertips. Let's do one more on each side. Woo. <laughs> I keep bashing this door here. Inhale through center. This time let's exhale, bring the hands behind. Now depending on your chair, you may need to scooch forward a bit so that we can maybe clasp the hands behind us. If we can't clasp the knuckles and reach them down towards the floor, just pretend that you're holding on to a, um, a beach ball and you're reaching that ball down towards the sand. Just trying to find a bit of an opening through the front side body here. You can stay nice and lifted, taking a few breaths, or you can exhale, fold forward over the thighs. The hands might reach back or up. One more breath. On the inhale, if you fold it forward, let's start to pull ourselves up from our knuckles to come all the way back up to seated. Release the hands. Roll the shoulders a couple of times forwards and backwards. All right. From here, let's take a big inhale. We're just going to round through the spine a little bit. So let's bring our hands down. We'll cross our hands in front of us. Give ourselves a big hug. So we're reaching for opposite shoulders and kind of pulling the shoulder blades apart. You might even want to round down a little bit. 
just to counter that big back bend and opening we just did. Let's really sweep up and we'll just do that one more time. Cross the opposite arm in front, reach for those shoulders and round down, splay the shoulder blades, breathe into backside body. Let's come up. Good. And again, just roll the shoulders, shake it out. Okay, let's do a couple more twists. We're just going to add a little bit of a, an angle here. So if you're on the floor, you can stay with your cross leg. If you haven't switched the cross leg, you, you can if you'd like. Um, and if you're in the chair here, we're just going to hinge forward. And same thing if you're seated on the ground, maybe just coming in to rest your forearm along the thighs. And from here, then we're going to sort of press into this uh, elbow, into knee, and open up through the front side body. And then we'll sweep that right arm up and back. So we're doing a, a, a modified version of um, a big open twist. We often find ourselves in this twist in a standing posture, wide leg standing posture. By having the elbow bent and, and resting it and using the legs as a bit of a um, apparatus, like a prop, it's just decreasing the, the length of the stretch. So again, if you can imagine this when we're standing, we're reaching all the way down to the floor and opening up. So again, just having the legs as our prop, it just decreases it a bit, especially because we're still in our warm up. We've been here in this nice big open twist for a few breaths. Let's stay for one more. All right, let's exhale. Good. We can take a big inhale here. Come on up and we'll just reposition ourselves. We're going to hinge forward, we'll bring opposite arm in front, and then we're going to press our elbow into the knee as we open up the chest, find a twist, and reach the left arm back. So again, this might feel a little bit nicer in the warm-up because like I was just saying, we're not reaching all the way down for the floor here. Our legs are acting as a prop. So we're using our bodies and the chair in a slightly different way today. Keep reaching, stay for one more full cycle. And then we'll exhale and come forward. Let's hinge all the way back up, maybe sweeping the arms up. Let's exhale, come forward. So find a forward fold, let the head hang heavy. Shake the head yes and no. Breathe into the backside body. Take another round of breath. And then engaging through the core, we can walk our hands up to our knees and help come up all the way to our seated position. Okay, let's work on the hips a little bit and then we'll get into a few postures where we're gonna use the chair in a slightly different way than normal. So for a little bit of hip warm up from the chair here, um, option on the floor is just to find some hip circles. You can do that in the chair as well. Or if we want to add a bit of a strength element, sitting up nice and tall, we'll lift the right leg off the floor, or off, yeah, off the floor, still sitting up nice and tall, and then maybe extend that leg. So we'll feel the muscles engaged. So we're warming them up a little bit. We'll feel the core muscles engaged to help stabilize us. We'll bend that knee again and lower it down. And then we'll switch sides. Option on the floor as well is to maybe get into um, your tabletop position and flow through a bit of a core breath flow. This is an option in the chair as well. Definitely still building strength and stability, moving with your breath, or a little bit more static where we lift. So we're gonna engage through the core muscles here. We're gonna lift with the uh, leg muscle, and we're gonna use those leg muscles to extend the left leg out this time. Hold it for a breath, bring it back in, lift, and lower. So there's lots of options. You've got your breath pattern. You've got this sort of strength work where we're building up some heat in the muscles. Lifting and sort of isolating these movements. Oh, make sure we're still sitting up nice and tall. Last one on each side. So you really feel those core muscles engaged to help stabilize you. You feel these quads working. You feel those hip muscles working as well. So we're waking everything up. 
circling the ankles if we'd like and lowering down. Okay, let's take a big breath here. Inhale, exhale, let's fold forward one more time before we get into our postures. Inhale all the way back up. Hands can help us come all the way up to seated. And exhale, hands through heart center. Okay, so before I show you the um, option for the chair, if you are planning on staying seated in the chair, by all means, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna quickly show us the sort of sequence of postures that we're gonna go through. So if you're seating, seat, staying seated in the chair, you're going to come into, um, Sort of a warrior one stance. So you might need to scooch, or sorry, warrior two stance to the edge of the chair. You're still going to be supported underneath the hips by the chair. We'll have our right leg bent, left leg uh, out to the side. We're not coming into warrior two specifically. We're going to be coming into our side angle. And then those of us um, standing, when I get there, we'll come into a triangle whereby we're going to straighten that front leg for a couple of breaths. And then we're all going to rotate back and find our reverse angle, a reverse warrior. So that's going to be the little sequence we're doing and then we're going to add a balance. So if you are coming up and out of the chair and want to still use the chair to incorporate the chair in a slightly different way, here are the options. No chair at all. You just work through your side angle and reverse warrior as normal. If you want to use the chair but not sit in it, options are to hold on to the chair for balance, sink into your sort of warrior two stance, We've got our right leg bent, left leg straight, and you can just be holding on. Or you can, instead of making your way all the way down to your knee, you can just come to find the seat of the chair. So you'll notice that I'm still in a side angle. My top arm sweeps up or over, so I've still got this nice long line of energy here. But it's a little bit less intense because I don't have to come all the way down to my knee and then bring my hips with me. So right away, this is just a little less intense, but we're still getting the benefits of this nice, strong side angle posture. So whew, settle into our chosen side angle here. No matter whether we're in the chair seated, uh, using the chair as support, or finding our elbow and knee, we're not dumping in. We don't want to dump into this right arm that's supporting us, not whether we're like this or like this. We want to press out, use the core strength, find that side angle. Okay. Let's find a couple of breaths here. If you're seated in the chair, same thing, staying here for a couple more breaths. If you're standing, option here is to straighten the front leg and we're finding ourselves in a little bit of a triangle. This top arm might wanna reach up. It may wanna come around just to help keep the chest open. We still wanna send the hips back towards the back wall just finding a little bit of a stretch down the front leg for another breath. Or you might be in your side angle still. Stay where you are. And then wherever you are, maybe finding a micro bend in that front leg just to help push us up and back to find our reverse warrior. The top uh, arm reaches up, the back arm reaches down the leg. Or it can stay behind us there if it's comfortable. If you're in the chair, reverse back as well. And then let's come on up. Good, press to the front leg. If you're in the chair, swing around to face the front. And we're all gonna turn the toes forward. You might be seated in a nice wide forward fold position here. We'll inhale and forward fold. And uh, I'm just gonna turn to face the chair. You can see where you are, or if you want to also use the chair so that you don't have to come all the way down to the floor or the blocks. This is a nice option to use the chair as well. So we're using the chair like our prop today just to really bring the floor closer up to us so that we get the full benefits of the pose without necessarily the intensity. You don't have to use the chair. Maybe you're coming all the way down into a nice big forward fold. Engage through the core if you're coming back up and because we might have our chairs, instead of bringing hands to hips, maybe we're going to bring our hands to the chair and help us find our way all the way back up to standing. Okay, 
So now we're gonna do that little sequence on the other side. I'm moving my chair over just to stay in frame. You can just walk yourself around and position yourself um, at the chair as needed. So we know where we're going this time. We want to find our warrior two stance. This time we wanna have that left leg bent, right leg straight out behind us, toes facing forward, hips facing forward. So we're going into our side angle here. So remember, option is to come down to the knee, but then we have to bring the hips down as well, or option is we come to the chair. So we still have that nice long line of energy, top arm reaches up or overhead, still energizing through the legs, and still not dumping into the shoulder or arm. We're still pressing out, engaging through the core, opening the heart space to the front. This is our side angle using the chair as support. Maybe we can drop the hips a little lower if we have the room. If not, keep reaching through the fingertips, reaching through the back leg, find length all down this side body here. Stay for a couple more breaths. Keep rooting down through both feet, making sure we're not dumping, so check in with making sure we're energizing out of the arm and the core. All right, if you're on the floor and you want to, you can start to straighten that front leg and we'll find ourselves in a little bit of a triangle. Send that, those hips and bums out this way. The top arm can reach up or maybe it comes around the back as well. Helps us open up the front side body, making sure we're in a nice flat sort of triangular pose here, feeling a bit of a stretch down the front leg. One more breath. And then we're going to find a way to reverse. So we might want to micro bend into that leg just to help uh, push ourselves up and back. Top arm can stay up or over. Back arm can stay behind us or reaching down the back leg for support. All right, let's come on back up. Good. We're going to do that forward fold one more time. So let's straighten the legs if you're in the chair. Position yourself so that you're facing forward. We'll inhale, take a big breath in, hands on hips. And again, you can fold forward towards your chair or you can hinge forward all the way down to a block if you have them or the floor. Let the head be heavy, shake it out, yes and no. Shake out the shoulders, breathe into the backside body and legs. Little micro bend, energize through the legs. So press into the feet. On the next inhale, we'll come on up. We'll bring our hands to our chair or our hips engage through the core and hinge all the way back up. Okay, good, roll it out. Come on up to standing. Now I want to do a little balance pose. Again, using the chair, I'm flipping my chair back around here so I can start on one side. You can just walk around to the side that's right for you. Uh, if you are in the seated in the chair for your balance pose, options for balance are to come back to the opposite arm and leg breathing because you'll feel the weight shift around and you'll feel your core engaged and that your balance will be challenged. So that's a nice option if you're staying seated in the chair for our balance pose. If not, if we're coming to use the chair today, we're going to um, use it either just holding onto the chair. Again, depending on the type of chair you have, maybe you're holding onto a wall or anything for balance. And we're going to start with as if we're going into a warrior three. So the feet will be hip distance. We're going to have equal weight distribution in both feet to begin with. Hands can be on hips at prayer or, of course, holding onto any prop for balance. And then we're going to see if we can step our left foot back. Nice, long, straight leg. And then we're gonna see if we can lift the toes off the mat. Maybe we stay here, maybe we're holding on, maybe our arms are gonna to come to airplane or reach up overhead. And then we're gonna to start to hinge forward. So as the chest lowers, the leg lifts. The hips stay square to begin with. Press into the support leg. Use the chair for balance. That's why we're using the chair today to test out to see if we can push the limits or find um, to access a pose differently with our prop. And you can stay practicing your warrior three or foot stays grounded, toes stay pointing the same direction. Option here is to sort of press and open the hips up. Both hands can stay grounded on the chair or the wall, or one hand can come to the hips and help 
rotate those hips open so you're stacking the hips on top of one another back leg is strong and then finally maybe you want to reach the top arm up so we're practicing a half moon here with the help of the chair really engage through the back leg that's up engage through the core balance is not about just the standing leg it's about everything and it's about stillness and quiet so i'll be quiet for two rounds of breath And we'll make our way back out. So let's close the hips up, the hand can come down, help rotate the hips back down towards the mat, engage and step back. Good. Whew. We're going to step right back into our warrior one. We'll inhale, reach up here. Warrior one, the feet are both facing roughly forward and the hips are facing that front leg. Good. Option to straighten through the front leg here, bring hands to hips and fold forward. Again, coming all the way down to the leg or the chair. And just finding a little stretch through the back of the leg. All right, let's bend into that front leg. Come on up to standing. We'll shake it out. Ooh, nice little sequence there. But you see how we're using the chair a little differently. So it's great if you're staying seated in the chair and you're moving through that opposite arm and leg breath work. That's how you're going to find your balance. If you are going to try that sequence on the other side, find your chair, find your equal weight distribution in both feet, hands on hips at prayer, holding on to the chair or not quite, whatever works for you. Find a moment of stillness and then transfer weight into the opposite foot. So transfer weight into that left foot and we'll step those right toes back. Hips stay nice and square to begin with. And then maybe those toes come off. Maybe we're holding on to our chair now. Maybe we're gonna to start to hinge forward. So as the, whoops, as the chest lowers, the right leg comes up. So we're finding a nice long line of energy. Other arm options are out to the side. We're reaching in front of us. Holding onto the chair for support is great too. As we sort of press into the standing foot and help spin the, let the hips open, so we're stacking that right hip on top of left. So sometimes bringing the hands to the hips here might give you that biofeedback and the feeling, ooh, I'm gonna lose my balance here, of opening up those hips and stacking them on top of each other. Energize through the back leg, the toes, and then find your half moon arms, either staying on the hip, reaching up, or omitting it all together. <laughs> Finding that stillness for two more breaths. All right, let's bring that hand back to the hip if it's not there, just to help guide the hip back down towards the mat so we can step the back foot down and inhale into our warrior one. Hopefully feeling a little bit of a stretch here. Option to bend that back knee, tilt the pelvis. We wanna stretch out that hip a little bit. All right. From our warrior one, option to bring the hands to the hips, straighten the front leg, hinge forward all the way down to the mat, or find that chair and find that modified pyramid pose, stretch through the front back leg. The back of the front leg is what I meant there. All right, let's come up. And we'll make our way up to standing. Whew, awesome. Let's set the feet wide, just swing it out a little bit, empty coat sleeves. Now we're going to make our way down to the mat. If you want to flow through a vinyasa, if that's part of your practice, by all means. So I uh, want to offer a couple chair options. Um, uh, if you're going to be seated in the chair, let me do that first. We're just moving into our stretches. So we're going to move into some bridges. So options in the chair is cat and cow, as always, or scooching to the edge of the chair. I'll just turn sideways for that. Scoot you to the edge of the chair, depending on how stable your chair is, pressing the hands behind, lifting the hips up, finding a bridge 
or reverse tabletop that way. And then we'll also be moving into, I'm going through these really quickly, <laughs> um, our figure four. So in the chair, it just looks like this and you can hinge forward and then we'll do that on the other side as well. Now, again, to encourage that beginner mindset, I'm gonna offer a couple of options with the chair, uh, but sort of coming out of the chair and using it in different ways. So we're gonna make our way down to the mat here. Um, and to begin with, we're just gonna sit facing our chair if, uh, if we've come out of the chair. I've got mine uh, pressed up against the wall just for the bridges later so it doesn't slide. Um, if your chair tends to move around and slide around, I suggest that you either omit using the chair for the bridges or make sure you can have it propped up against something so that it doesn't slide around. But for these first few stretches, it, it doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna come into either a comfortable cross-legged position or maybe if you're feeling a little looser through the hips after those stretches and balance poses, you can come into a half lotus, which is where we're going to bring our foot up into our hip crease here. And I'm facing the chair because the idea here is to feel the stretch, a nice deep stretch with a nice tall back, but without the um, intensity of coming all the way down to the mat. If that's in your practice, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, with me, take a big inhale here. We can start to walk our hands to our chair as we hinge forward. And with the chair here, we can cross our arms or stack our fists and lower our forehead down, whatever feels best. We wanna try and keep a nice tall spine. If you're folding all the way forward, by all means, go ahead, fold forward. Maybe also stacking wrists, bringing the floor up a little closer. So with maybe a little less uh, worry about getting down to the floor, we can focus on relaxing through the hips in this stretch. Notice where we might feel any sensations. Again, we're not thinking about getting our forehead all the way down to the mat. We can see what's going on in other parts of our body. Pull a nice deep breath. We've got a nice long spine. One more breath. On the next inhale, we'll lift the forehead and we'll start to hinge all the way back up. Now here is an option for um, a reverse tabletop in the chair, or we can just lean back, fingers facing forwards or out to the side, uncross the legs and just windshield wiper them. We're gonna do that on the other side. So we'll press ourselves back up. We're gonna switch the cross of the leg. So either um, just switching the cross or switching the half lotus, if it is in your practice on this side, by bringing the heel up into the folds of the hip crease here. And then sitting up nice and tall. And we can start to hinge forward. We'll bring our hands to the chair. And again, maybe crossing uh, arms or stacking fists. Maybe think about stacking the opposite hand on top wherever you are going with this stretch and then settling in. So with this tall spine and with the support of the chair, let's see if we can melt the hips down into the mat. Let's see if we can find just a deeper breath as we did at the beginning of class here. On the next inhale, we'll come on back up. Same thing here, let's walk our hands behind us, uncross the legs, windshield wiper them a little bit. Then we're gonna do one more stretch with the help of the chair to support our forehead. So let's come through center, uh, and this time we're gonna position ourselves into a wide leg forward fold. So come into this nice wide fold. You're about you know a foot away from the chair. Again, just so that when you lean forward, you can rest your forehead on the chair. 
So make any adjustments you need to to your posture here. If you find you're rolling back onto the hips, maybe uh, sitting up on a block if you have a block or rolling your mat up just to give a bit of height to the hips so we can sit up with a nice tall spine. And then same thing, we're gonna find our chair, hinge forward, maybe stack fists, cross arms, whatever feels best. And once again, if you feel like you don't want the use of the chair, you can remove the chair or move back from the chair and hinge forward towards the floor. By using this chair and bringing the floor way up to us though, see if we can notice how the stretch feels down the back and inner legs. One more full cycle of breath. And then on the next inhale, let's lift the forehead. We'll walk ourselves all the way back up. And we're going to roll down to our backs. Now you can roll down any way that feels safe. Uh, an option is to hold on to one leg. Use it as a bit of a lever to get all the way down. And when you get there, maybe just rock side to side a little bit. Massage out that back. And then from here, now this is where I was talking about uh, coming into a bridge option and making sure that your chair isn't going to fly out, <laughs> making sure it's stabilized against that wall. So if you have a nice stable chair, whether it's because it's a big heavy chair or because it's against the wall, a bridge option for us might be to plant the heels onto the chair. Um, or, of course, if we're just going to do a traditional bridge, we can bring our feet down to the mat. We can all bring our hands down to our sides, palms turned down. I'm going to demonstrate the chair bridge option. So hands down by our sides, palms turned down, feet into the mat or the chair, and then we're going to press into the feet, hands, and squeeze the bum, lift the hips up, and we'll find ourselves in a bridge pose. Now in the chair, um, I demonstrated the option here. If it's a nice stable chair, you can bring your hands behind and press into that sort of bridge slash reverse tabletop that I just showed you. You can stay in your bridge or move with your breath, pressing into hands and feet. I'm doing a little um, active breathing bridge here. I will say I find with my feet up on this chair, I find the bridge quite intense in terms of um, the blood kind of rushing to my face. So I might switch it up and just plant my feet on the mat and move into a regular bridge. And that's okay, you can change your mind. We're gonna stay for three, for two, And one on the exhale, lower down, roll through the spine. When you get all the way down, hug the knees in towards the chest again. Hands can come behind or on top of the shins. Maybe you want to pull the forehead towards the knees. Whatever feels okay here. And then release the left foot down. We're going to come into our figure four. Cross the right knee over, sorry, the right ankle over the left knee. Let that right knee flop open. If you're in the chair, you might stay here or you might fold forward. If you're on the mat, you might reach through, thread the needle, grab onto the back of the left leg and draw that leg in. So we're feeling a nice big stretch down the outer right hip. you're ready we can release uncross the leg and we'll go to the other side so left ankle over right knee let that left knee splay open and maybe reach through thread the needle and come into your figure four on the other side drawing that right knee in left knee presses away
Alrighty, we'll release the foot down to the mat. And if there's any final postures your bodies are craving, go ahead and find that now. If you are moving into a traditional Shavasana with legs stretched out along the mat, you can do that now. Or since we have a chair here, we might want to um, scooch our bums a little closer to the chair, inch our way down there, and see if we want to bring our the back of our calves or our calves up onto the chair. We'll come into a bit of a modified um, legs up the wall here. So with our legs resting on the chair, we can allow the blood to just naturally flow back towards heart center with this little bit of elevation. Hands can come down by our sides with palms turned up or down, or we can place one hand on heart center, one on belly, whatever feels best for our final relaxation pose. We'll just start to scan our bodies and notice if there are any areas that might be feeling a bit of tension still, see if we can't breathe a little loving kindness that way. Shavasana is the time for our physical and energetic bodies to absorb all that good work we just did and turn it into something magical. It's a time for integration and rest. And know that rest is different from sleep and that we need both every day and we should never pass up an opportunity to just rest and do nothing. Of course, the beauty of practicing through the lens is that if you want to or need to stay in your Shavasana for any length of time, by all means, let the video play out or press pause now. If you are ready to get on with your day or evening, start to wake up the body by wiggling fingers and toes, circling wrists and ankles. Maybe you want to stretch long along the mat, maybe reach the feet all the way up to the ceiling, or maybe you want to curl into a ball one last time, just before rolling over to one side and making your way to a comfortable seated position. And once we're here, we find ourselves in our comfortable seated position. Hands can come down to our lap with palms turned down or up, depending on the energy we want for the end of our practice. We can rest our hands in prayer or right over the heart center. Let's take a big inhale here together and let it go. I want to thank you so much for allowing me into your personal private yoga practice spaces and for allowing me to be your guide through these postures. I hope that felt new and interesting and wonderful and a little bit challenging and a little bit just what you like what you needed today. And until we have a chance to do this all over again next week, take care. Thanks everyone. I hope that you took the opportunity here to try something a little bit different and new and that it feels quite refreshing in your sort of body and mind and soul and spirit. Have a great week. See you next week.